Before the MCU, the Avengers weren't as popular as they are now. Back then, if you asked someone who's your favorite Avenger, they probably say who? But then there came a day like no other when Earth's Mightiest Heroes finally got a show. Not that one. And it was called Avengers. Earth's Mightiest Heroes. This was one of the best comic book shows out there. It stuck close to the comics and was a big love letter to the Marvel Universe. But then the film came out, so it got cancelled and was replaced with another show to cash off of it. You what?! Yeah, so obviously a lot of people weren't happy about this. And neither was I. I mean, just look at the poster for season 1. It's very clear what the intention was. Even the trailer tells you. You've seen them on the big screen. Now see them on your screen. Honestly though, could you really blame Marvel? Avengers was the highest grossing movie at the time, and that still continues to this day. So of course they were going to start putting the MCU in everything. Yet this show, believe it or not, is actually good. Well, most of the time. I mean this show could have ended like the Avengers game, yet it actually does have good writing, and this is a great adaptation of the team, most of the time. But it has been 9 years since the show came out, and the MCU is very different from what it once was a decade ago. So that begs the question, is Avengers Assemble a good show? Well, let's find out. We start off with Tony stalking, I mean checking on the Avengers since the team has parted ways. But when Captain America dies, the Avengers assemble to stop Red Skull and MODOK. Obviously Captain America isn't dead, but Red Skull swaps minds with him, cause that was a popular move at the time. They beat Red Skull only for him to steal Iron Man's armor and then becomes the Iron Skull, which is actually a pretty cool idea. With Red Skull and MODOK being a big threat now, the Avengers reunite along with new member Falcon, who is a young hero following Tony's guidance. Hey, look at that. They did something before the MCU did. So the Avengers go up against Doctor Doom, Hammer, and lesser known villains such as Dracula, Super Adaptoid, Hyperion, and Atuma. I appreciate that the plot wasn't just make Loki the villain of the season. We got new characters that not many people have seen before unless they've read a comic. I also like how we saw other superheroes outside the Avengers like Spider-Man, The Thing, the old Guardians of the Galaxy, and even Punisher makes an appearance in a kid show. Well, it's actually not the first time. Thanks Punisher, we really appreciate this. <sighs> We're nothing but white blood cells, hunting the infection called crime. A sickness that sneaks in through the cracks. The way that Brussels sprouts sneak on a wood plate of delicious macaroni and cheese. Sure, the city looks safe. Just push the Brussels sprouts to one side, right? Raw! <laughs> no matter where you put them, their vile vegetable juices corrupt the whole plate. I like the side stories with Dr. Doom. They really nailed the character with how foreboding he is and how he's always planning ahead of everyone. This is what I want to see in the movies. Are you paying attention, John? Seriously, there's gotta be a quiz after this. What's also great are the voice actors. We got Bumper Robinson as Falcon, Troy Baker as Hawkeye, Laura Bailey as Black Widow, Fred Tassor as Hulk, Travis Willingham as Thor, Roger Craig Smith as Captain America, and Liam O'Brien as Red Skull? This is an amazing voice cast! To me, these are the definitive voices for all of these characters, and I can't imagine anyone else voicing them. Well, except for Adrian Pastor as Iron Man. Now, Adrian Pastor is a great actor, and I love him in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. 
However, this doesn't sound like Iron Man to me. I know. What's in the box? A bomb? Let me jet it into the exosphere for you. Not a bomb. Rare vaccine for a plague stricken village? No. Huh. This is my room? Yeah, I know. But I was working late in the lab and I needed space. Well, so do I. Unless you know how to juggle unstable particles without tearing a hole in the universe, it's gonna have to wait. And I wouldn't be so picky if we didn't have Eric Loomis as Iron Man in the previous show. This guy sounds exactly like Robert Downey Jr. What do we got, Jarvis? Armor power is down to 40% after using the Unibeam, which I recommend it again. I'm in on the ground. Ah, uh, yes. 14 Hydra targets, all heavily armed, sir. Huh. Maybe I should have brought Rhodey along. Jarvis, make a note. Remind me not to wake up in the morning ever again. Noted, sir. How's the Unibeam power level? Unless you guys are here to thank me for doing your job for you, I'm not in the mood for this. It's a little nitpick, and you get used to the voice. As for the animation, I actually like it. Character designs are great, action is done well, and say it with me, it has shading! You didn't say it with me, did you? Although the one thing I hate is the movie style editing. The forced black bars and the CGI does not give the show a unique style. It just stands out like a sore thumb, and I'm glad they don't do this for the rest of the series. Alright, we got some one-off episodes to cover. So, which are the good, the bad, and the okay ones? The Doctor Doom ones are the best ones, with Doom summoning the Midgard Serpent, controlling the Destroyer, and the Avengers getting Loki to help, changing the timeline, and even an episode where Cap has to protect Doom. Like I mentioned before, there are some great character episodes like Hulk having to teach everyone how to be a Hulk and then fight them, Tony having to fight without his armor, Hulk having a day out of town, Odin hanging out with the Avengers, Hulk and Hawkeye fighting Mojo, the Avengers fighting Galactus with the Guardians, and exploring Hawkeye's past. Man, a lot of these had Hulk in them. Maybe he should get another show. Dear God, no! The Ghost episode was okay. It's skippable and really doesn't make sense in terms of horror since we get a Dracula episode later. We get an episode where Molecule Man's kid has his wand, so Hawkeye and Black Widow have to chase him. It also shows the Avengers as the previous version of them from the last show, implying that this is canon to that show. But that doesn't make sense, because this Spider-Man is the ultimate Spider-Man, and not the same Spider-Man from the last show, because he wasn't in S.H.I.E.L.D. and was working for the Daily Bugle, but they did have the mansion in the beginning of the season, yet this version of Falcon is different from that version of Falcon because he's older, so... That don't make sense. The Impossible Man episode was just the worst. I mean, why did he even get an episode? What was the reason for this? Just to recreate the New York battle from the film? Oh, here's a fun drinking game. Take a shot every time the show references the MCU. Cause trust me, they do that a lot this season. So you're gonna get drunk pretty quick. And last but not least, there's an episode where Iron Man and Ant-Man are trying to stabilize dangerous Prim particles that could shrink the whole Earth and need Sam's help. But he's more concerned with hiding his superhero life from his mom and the Avengers help him. Way to set your priorities, man. All right, let's get back to the story. Red Skull creates the Cabal as a team to fight the Avengers. Sam gets injured and Tony has a moment of vulnerability. But when Falcon recovers and gets a new suit that I personally don't like, I mean, why is this the mask? Eventually, Red Skull gets a Tesseract and starts tearing the world apart. It's an epic battle for the Avengers that even includes his own teammates to fight against him. They win, but only for now as bigger threats are coming soon. Season 1 was a pretty great start for this show. Despite the obvious MC references and some episodes, it managed to be different and experiment with the lesser known side of the Marvel Universe. So let's see if Season 2 can make some improvements. So we start off with Tony moderating the team again. Okay, so clearly this guy needs some friends. Luckily, Tony's dad built him one called Arsenal, who's not only powerful, but loving since Tony's dad felt bad for not always being there for him. But that'll have to wait, cause Red Skull returns to warn the Avengers of Thanos. Yup, we're doing Thanos already. No need to wait four years for him to show up. This show says f that and brings him in the first two episodes. 
Thanos is awesome. In just two episodes, we understand how big of a threat he is and what he can do. We get a few episodes that cover each stone, like the Power Stone need to be contained, the Time Stone nearly breaking time, the Mind Stone switching everyone's minds and making MODOK even deadlier, the Reality Stone changing all reality to create a world where villains are the heroes, and the Space Stone nearly crashing Asgard and Earth together. Just like each movie did, we established just how powerful one stone can be, thus making it worse when they're all together. So with all five stones together, wait a minute, five? Where's the soul stone? The show completely ignores it and the only reason I can think of why is because that stone is connected to death. But remember that X-Men killed one of their own team members in the second episode of the series. Granted, he came back, but he still died. The stones start manipulating Tony, which leads to Black Widow and Thor working together because of course they would. But the stones basically become the ring and everyone wants them, especially the guardians. Oh hey, they updated them. Okay, side note, I normally get annoyed when characters change to look and act like the MCU version, but guardians are the universal exception to this. I mean, come on, don't lie to me and say you like this version of the guardians over these guys. Anyways, Thanos gets the stones, so it's an all out intense battle, with the Avengers even dying at one point. Arsenal manages to contain the Infinity Stones, and the Avengers beat Thanos. But straight out of left field, Arsenal is taken over by Ultron and absorbs the Infinity Stones. Oh man, this universe is already screwed. It's obvious they had to do this since Age of Ultron was coming out, but it's not just a quick tie-in event. It's a part of the overarching story that goes on for 5 episodes. Now last time I complained about Ultimate Spider-Man having too much going on in Season 4, but here we have more time to flesh things out. It takes time to tell these big stories without them feeling overwhelming to us. Plus, these are the Avengers, so they're used to handling big threats like these all the time. They even have time for one-off episodes, believe it or not, which means it's time for another, the good, the bad, and the okay ones. I really wouldn't call this a one-off since it comes back later, but we get an episode of Nighthawk, one of Marvel's Batman, taking out the Avengers with contingency plans. Falcon and Hawkeye are trapped in another realm, and Hawkeye has to show Sam how to manage without tech. Kinda like what they did with Tony last season, but with alchemy. We also get a nice episode of Hawkeye and Widow on a mission, and there's an episode later with Hawkeye bonding with a new Avenger. Man, Hawkeye is so cool. We need a TV show for him. Oh, thank you. Hulk and Thor are transported to Valhalla, which should actually be Hell, but it's a kid's show, to fight in front of Hela. Wait, so we can say that but not Hell? Whatever, it's alright. I mean, it's Loki tricking the Avengers, which he'll do again later, so what was even the point of this? The worst episode this season is the Winter Soldier one. It's just a pointless episode to advertise the movie. Which, I have to mention, there's not as many MCU references here. Which is great because they're not in your face. Some of them are even used in clever ways. Everyone is concerned with hunting down Ultron, but Tony is hesitant to destroy him since he's using Arsenal's body. This creates tension between him and Cap since he's jeopardizing the team's safety every time by not telling them the full plan. Yep, we're also doing a bit of civil war in this arc as well. Granted, it's not as big as the comics and kind of out of nowhere, but it creates tension and shows one of Tony's vulnerabilities. He's so concerned about Arsenal that it leads to him not taking the shot to kill Ultron or allowing Ultron to gain the advantage. So Cap leaves to join S.H.I.E.L.D. and Spider-Man fills in for him for one episode. And while I would love that, it's Ultimate Spider-Man, so he's annoying everyone. I usually support your crazy ideas, Tony, but Spider-Man? Really? What's so crazy about that? And when THE Tony Stark calls you, you gotta say- Down! Oh, are you trying to get atomized? <laughs> I narrate my adventures. It's my thing. But eventually he leaves and most of the Avengers join Cap. Tony needs another bug related hero and gets Ant-Man to join the team. After two episodes with each Avenger, Ultron is finally ready to introduce his plan by infecting every human to turn into an Ultron bot. Okay, that's actually terrifying. Thankfully we don't have a dumb fight scene and everyone puts aside the differences for the greater good. This ends with Arsenal sacrificing himself by flying into the sun and Ultron finally being destroyed. The team gets back 
back together and now has Ant-Man on their roster. Ant-Man is a fun addition to the team and really useful too, which they're gonna need to fight the Squadron Supreme, who are basically an evil version of the Justice League. Not many people know about them, so this brings something new to the table. And once again, each episode shows how powerful each member is, so when they all team up, it's a big problem that takes two episodes to beat. Right after we have two final episodes where the Avengers try to expand past our world and save others. But this leads to the Black Order and Thanos, who's once again all powerful. He makes an offer to spare Earth, but the Avengers know that they can't let him destroy the universe. So they stand against him. Thanos tries to find Earth, but Ant-Man shrinks the entire planet to hide from him. Okay, they made him OP in the show. We get an epic battle against Thanos again, and it's beyond amazing. Oh my god, Miss Waller! We've got a freaking kaiju up in this shit. Seriously, this episode is awesome. Go watch it. With the world safe for now, Tony plans to expand the Avengers with more heroes to come. Season 2 is my favorite of the entire series. It improves everything from Season 1 and is everything I wanted this to be. Great writing, better animation, and fantastic action scenes. I couldn't imagine how they would top the season off. And they didn't. Okay, so one, why didn't you call it Ultron Unleashed or Rage of Ultron? Those are much better than this. And two, we just had a storyline with Ultron. And by the time this came out, Age of Ultron was already on DVD. So why are we doing this again? My theory is that Marvel was just doing it because everyone was kind of disappointed with how Ultron was portrayed in the movie. So they put him in everything else to show how cool he is. But Ultron is cool, and you already showed that. God, I spent one minute complaining about the title. We're already off to a great start. So it turns out that the team split up again because there weren't any bad guys. Man, for a team that doesn't give up, they sure give up a lot. Which also means Ammon left and they cancel expanding the roster. Oh, just fun, fun, good, fun. <laughs> so once again, they have to learn to work together. Just like how they did in Season 1, when they have to go against Ames' new Super Adaptoid. But they used a piece of Ultron, so of course this somehow brings Ultron back to life and updates him to look like the MCU version. Alright, so as you can tell, everyone has been updated to look like the film which honestly isn't surprising. But Ultron here just looks off. I mean, it's an exact one-for-one -one copy. And to be honest, I don't like Ultron having a movable mouth. It should be cold and emotionless like Ultron himself. However, I do like Cap and Widow's redesigns. This is the best costume for Captain America. So of course we're gonna copy and paste it. And Black Widow's costume is great. Hulk has fitting pants now. That's it, not much you could've done there anyways. Oh, never mind. Seems like Hulk gotta be casted again. Oh, and also Hulk and Widow are kind of a thing now. Remember when Josh Whedon did that? Besides that, everyone else is the same, which makes sense. Falcon here is younger than the movies. Thor looks the same as he did at the time. This look for Hawkeye still works. Yeah, funny enough, Iron Man looks outdated compared to these guys. I know it's asking a lot to put more detail on him to match this, but maybe a little something so he wouldn't stand out like a sore thumb at times. Anyways, now Ultron is the villain of the season, so let's see how he tops last season's plan. He just tries to leave and gets blown up, decides to send a bunch of robots called the Ultimates, Alright, key reference, but also why. Loses, doesn't do anything for 6 episodes, then tries to use the Inhumans to destroy humanity, but Will changes it to only expose humans to Terrigen, then gets destroyed again. Say what you want about Ultron in the movie, but at least he got shit done. Other than that, we get other storylines like the Thunderbolts. A group of villains pretending to be heroes only to realize they actually like it. I love the Thunderbolts and I'm glad they finally appear in something. Although I do find it ridiculous that they're using holograms to change costumes instead of changing costumes. But hey, washing your suits sucks, so I understand that. Alright, while we wait for that to be done, let's do a quick good, bad, and the okay ones. The best was when Hawkeye, Widow, and Falcon traveled back to the 1940s to meet little Steve, while Zemo and his father tried to beat the Avengers. It's pretty cool and crazy when they bring out Zemo 2099. Yes, I said that. Go see it for yourself. The okay ones were Yelena being introduced. She was just annoying and nowhere near as good as her MCU version. Although, to be fair, she was kinda like this in the comics before. However, what saves that episode is Hulk becoming a Winter Soldier. I swear, I'm not making this up. 
whoever wrote these episodes smoked the right amount of pot. And it was the one where Hulk is turned back to Bruce, so he kind of feels left out of the team. I wish they explored that concept more since that is what the character is mainly about. But you know what? That's already been covered in a great show from the 90s. Lastly, there's a Halloween episode with Doctor Strange. Which, I don't know why they always made him do the holiday specials, but yeah, it's okay. Alright, so I mentioned the Inhumans before, and you're probably thinking, Who? The Inhumans are a race of human beings with special genes hidden inside them that can unlock special abilities and... Yeah, kind of like the X-Men. Although to be honest, it's not fair to compare them when the humans are different in many ways. Instead of trying to bond with society, they just don't care. They're royalty, so they don't really get out most of the time. Not many people know or care about them. But this was around the time Marvel really wanted to use the X-Men, but couldn't because 20th Century Fox owned the movie rights. So they basically erased every existence of the X-Men and Fantastic Four from all media put the spotlight on the humans, and literally try to kill all the mutants. This was to build up the movie coming out, but then cancelled it to create an IMAX TV show that was supposed to blow everyone away. Instead, it ended up bombing and Marvel killed off the Inhumans once they got the X-Men rights back. I feel bad for how the Inhumans were treated. They're a cool group of superheroes, but when you're comparing them to the X-Men, then it's obvious who people are going to root for. So with more Inhumans being revealed, we get Inferno, Miss Marvel, and that's it? Really? The world's been exposed to Terrigen, and you just used these two? What about Quake? Or Synapse? You did this big storyline with the potential of using any character, and you only used two? Well, at least Miss Marvel is here. Kamala Khan is such a great character, and my favorite female superhero. I'm glad to see her in everything and hope they get it right on the Disney Plus show. It. The other storyline we get is Kang the Conqueror, which should be awesome, but they really underuse him. This version of Kang isn't as good as Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Then we get some episodes featuring Vision, Captain Marvel, Black Panther, and Ant-Man. Normally I would love this, but these episodes aren't that great and barely tell us who these characters are. Vision tries to learn the value of friendship, but then Ultron crashes the party to remind you that he's still the villain of this season. Then gets destroyed again. Captain Marvel is annoying, even Cap doesn't like her. Black Panther was cool to see, but it breaks continuity with Claw looking like the MCU version when he's supposed to be his comic version in Ultimate Spider-Man. And we know those shows are connected, so don't tell me I'm wrong. Ant-Man's episode was just the worst. It breaks continuity again with Egghead being hired, if Scott already met him. How many more villains left to go? Well, let's see. Madam X, Dr. Egghead. And they just parody the MCU. They even made a Civil War trailer. It's obvious to catching up to the MCU Avengers. But I want to see some other heroes who aren't on the team yet. Like Spider-Man, Luke Cage, Doctor Strange. You know, something we haven't seen before. Friday, deactivate alarm. Authorization Truman Alpha 1. Hey, finally, a character that's so obscure and he appeared and died in the same comic. He takes over the Avengers and has a vendetta with Hulk, so he replaces him with Red Hulk. This story may sound familiar to you because it was already done in Earth's Mightiest Heroes, yet that was one episode. Here, it's three episodes, and they're actually good. Unfortunately, the last four episodes are based on Civil War. Really? Again? At this point, Civil War already came out. So why are we having Civil War 2? Did you forget the entire last season? Truman tries to start the Inhuman Registration Act, which Black Bolt surprisingly agrees to, something he would never do. But the Avengers aren't with this new program, so they're replaced by the other Avengers we've been building up to, and we have a stupid fight scene that bends all logic. I mean, why do these guys care about the Inhuman Registration Act? Ms. Marvel is on the team, so it doesn't make sense. And why are they fighting the other Avengers when they've helped them before? They don't even know who Truman is! And once again, Captain Marvel starts acting out of character and tries killing everyone. Man, she should stay away from Civil Wars. Cap is down and the Avengers are arrested which leads to them finding out that Truman is controlling the Inhumans to attack other humans. The other Avengers realize their mistake and help out too. We're all good people, right? We all did the right thing. Whenever we could. They confront Truman, who revealed himself to be... Still wrong. 
Ultron? Yep, it's Ultron because of course it is. Side note, this was a theory that the general guy from WandaVision was secretly Ultron trying to take over, which would have been awesome and was the only theory I was hoping was true, but isn't, so he was just Sergeant Dumbass instead. So once again, for the fifth time now, Ultron gets destroyed again, but he hacks into Tony's armor, including his arc reactor, forcing Doctor Strange to send him to a dimension where technology doesn't work. But with the risk of Ultron coming back, Tony is trapped there. And this isn't just a one episode thing, this is a big sacrifice that lasts for most of season 4. I'll admit, I didn't expect the show to pull its main star Avenger out like this. That takes a lot of guts to do, and it kinda adds weight to this whole season. So with the tower destroyed, the Avengers move into a compound. <sighs> just like the movies. Man, season 3 is so complicated. On one hand, I like the original stories it told with the Thunderbolts and UFOs, but on the other hand, I hated the constant pandering to the movies. None of it felt original and just felt like they had to do it rather than wanting to do it. And Ultron just felt like a plot device rather than an actual villain. You could have replaced him with AIM, Maximus, Truman, or how about Magneto? The whole destroy Inhumans in human plot would have made perfect sense if it was Magneto behind it. <sighs> well, hopefully next season will be something new. So let's see what else this show could possibly do. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Secret Wars is an awesome event that's only been adapted once in the 90s Spider-Man show and hasn't been done since. But an entire season dedicated to it? Alright, let's see how long I have to wait for this. 17 episodes? Are you kidding me? You name an entire season on an event that I have to wait 17 episodes for? Everyone including Jane Foster signed up away for Tony to return and Besides, if I'm gonna find my way back, I need a beacon to show me where home is. Oh, right. They changed his voice. Adrian Pastar couldn't return because of scheduling issues slash being in the better show, so Mick Wingard is the guy who voices him. Now, here's the thing. I think Mick doesn't do a bad job. I mean, it takes a while to get used to, but after hearing him in What If, he's not a bad choice. Although, here, it doesn't work. I blame that on voice direction. Just listen to these clips from different shows, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Yes, it's very cool. Please, no gang signs. No, throw it up, I'm kidding. Yeah, peace, I love peace. I'd be out of a job with peace. How's it working out for you? I've been worse. And just who is the boss? Lieutenant? Last I checked your names on the building. And the paper trail, you certainly saw to that. Would you recommend my combat suit? Stealth suit, exo atmosphere suit? Oh yeah, let's not forget about the underwater suit. Oh wait. Have you heard about the latest one? <clears throat> it's the nifty remote control suit. <laughs> Usually I leave a big tip, but with the suit on, it's hard to reach my wallet. Sorry. I feel like he wasn't given enough to work off of, and that's why this Tony sounds so off, and it gets worse in the next season. Speaking of getting worse, let's talk about the animation. Now, let's play Blue's Clues here for a second. Can you tell me what's wrong with this animation? I think you know the answer, so say it with me. There's no shading! Seriously, no one? Now I will point out that I got some comments from my 2017 Spider-Man video about my complaints with the animation. They argued that it was an intended art style and was an artistic choice rather than budget. And that's a valid argument. There are a bunch of shows without shading, and whenever they're used, it's for serious moments. Plus, there are some good animes out there that don't use shading. But these are the same character designs from last season. So if it's a different art style, then why would they use the same models and backgrounds? Plus, some characters do have shading like Black Panther, or at least a shine effect. And the Guardians of the Galaxy show started doing this too. Now, just to state this, I'm minoring in production management and currently trying out animation. From what I've learned, because it takes time and money to draw these characters, add detail, and because this show comes out yearly, they didn't add shading, thus giving them more time to finish these episodes. Which again, I wouldn't have minded if this wasn't Disney and if we haven't seen these characters shaded before. The leader shows up with his own Gabal featuring Enchantress, Scourge, Armzola, and Kang the Conqueror? Okay, I can see Enchantress and Scourge working for him, 
but Zola and Kang would never work under someone. Clearly this will. Come on, to me! We can still destroy them! No leader. I'm afraid that time has passed. Huh? Oh, well that was fast. So the original Avengers are gone, which means the new Avengers from last season take over now, including Ant-Man and Wasp, who look like the MCU version of course. But hey, at least Josh Keen voices Ant-Man now. If only he would voice Spider-Man again. It's always nice to switch up the roster and it's about time that happened. And then immediately try to get the original Avengers back. I mean, I like the originals as much as everyone else does, but it would have been cool to see these guys be a team by themselves a little longer. The next few episodes consist of new members getting the original back like Captain America fighting Zemo in Dimension Z, Hulk and Bruce switching and working with Black Panther against Scourge, Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel teaming up, good episodes. Except for the one where Falcon works with Kang and this ages him up, and now he looks like the MCU Falcon. God damn it! Can we stop with the pandering? This all leads to Loki freezing New York, so all the Avengers have to stop him. Wow, fighting Loki again? Really? For the third time? What is this, 2012? Overall, not a bad event, but feels like we're stalling for the big event that's coming up. But we still have a few more episodes to go through, so you guessed it, let's see what's the good, the bad, and the okay ones. Surprisingly, the Halloween and the Christmas one were the best one-off episodes. Hawkeye has to protect Wendy Frost, played by Wynne Everett, reprising her role from the Agent Carter show. Once again, proving how cool Hawkeye is. In the Christmas one, Tony and Cap are visited by Agent Carter and Howard Stark. It's a great episode of these two characters interacting with their loved ones, kind of like how Endgame does. Kang is still annoying, but Haley Atwell overpowers that. The OK ones was the Eye of Akimoto event. It just felt like a forced Doctor Strange story. Cap, Black Panther, and Shuri had to fight Baron Mordo. Then Agamotto himself starts to cause trouble, and Doctor Strange and Hulk have to fight him. In the same location as the last episode. I mean, I don't mind this, but again, what was the point? Alright, we've been waiting long enough. Let's finally talk about Secret Wars. All the Avengers are teleported to Battleworld thanks to the Beyonder. Now the Beyonder is a very complicated character to begin with. First, he was a cosmic entity of immense power, but no one knew how to write him, so they made him a part of the Cosmic Cube or whatever. Then they retconned him to be part of a species, and he just so happened to be a mutant and an inhuman hybrid, which no one liked. Here the Beyonder is way different and better than anyone who's written about him before. He's an alien who's so technologically advanced that he seems like a god to everyone else. He's doing all this for an experiment instead of a test or just cause. This is an interesting take on him and serves as the perfect antagonist for the Avengers and Iron Man, seeing how they both want to improve everything with technology. Not only that, but they made him look cool. I mean, from a dumb 80s design to this is much appreciated. They don't hold back on how powerful he is either. He literally splits Hulk in half. After fighting Tony and having to fight Moon Knight, we finally have Iron Man back with a new look of course. Honestly, I'm not gonna complain. It was about time. Loki finally gets some character arc and decides to help the Avengers with restoring Earth. So we get six fantastic episodes of the Avengers exploring Battleworld, which in the first story was just another planet, but they took the idea from 2015's story and made it pieces of other worlds, which makes Battleworld even more exciting. If you thought season 2 was crazy, then this event alone cranks it up to 11. I mean, we have a Mad Max chase with an army of Ghost Riders. My only complaints are no other heroes show up, Fantastic Four and X-Men I get, but no Spider-Man? Come on, this event is how he gets the black suit. I mean, it already happened and he just got rebooted, but I still wanted to see this. Also, this whole event is only 8 episodes, which is way too short in my opinion. It should have been half the season at least. I dare say, the whole season. But I guess we needed to fill the 25 episode requirement. The Avengers rebuild the Bifrost and have an epic battle with a suited up Beyonder. They barely win with Loki performing the spell, and Jane Foster becoming Thor and beating him. And so we end on a satisfying conclusion. I need you to return the Eye of Agamotto to me. No. Ah, uh, are you kidding me? We're really making Loki the last minute villain? We just had an episode of this. So now you're making one more just cause? You ruined all that character building and reverted him to being a villain again? 
Is it at least an exciting battle to watch? Never mind. Oh, and one last insult. Jane is renamed Thunderstrike and given this sh hammer. What is that? How is that even a weapon? What is it with these shows and dishonoring legacy characters? Season 4 is the best adaptation of Secret Wars, without a doubt. But we don't see that for 17 episodes, and we don't even end with it. I feel like the need for 25 episodes hurt this season, and another reason why we don't always need 25 episodes in a season. If it didn't waste so much time on the other stuff, then I'd say this would've topped season 2 in terms of storytelling. Which is a shame because I love this version of Secret Wars. Well, I guess that ends the Avengers Assemble- wait. There's one more? Well, alright. Let's see what the last season does. I'm surprised that Avengers didn't bring Thanos back and just do the whole Infinity Stones again. Instead, because the movie was coming out, they gave a whole season of Black Panther, which is really cool. Black Panther deserves a TV show, and a video game as well. Come on Marvel, make it happen! Although, don't put Square Enix on it, maybe, maybe find another, another publisher. It starts like any episode. The Atlanteans are attacking the surface, which happened in Season 1. Atuma signed a treaty with the surface world. Why is Atlantis attacking now? Wait, when did that happen? You may stand down. A tumor, of course. Who the f are you? So this is a tumor, apparently, even though he looks nothing like the past seasons and he isn't starting the fight. He's calm, collective, and actually tries to keep peace. This isn't the Entuma we've seen before, it's a completely new version of him. By that logic, that means that this isn't connected to the past seasons, and it's its own thing, right? But then we see Whitney Frost again, and it's the same one from the Halloween episode. Yet, we later see the 2017 Spider-Man, even though Ultimate Spider-Man is supposed to be in this universe. So how does any of this make sense? F*** it. If they're not gonna care about continuity, then I won't either. So Tiger Shark, Yes, that's his name. Steals a relic for the Shadow Council, which is led by Killmonger. While it's not surprising, I say it wasn't a good choice for making him the villain of this season. And the reason is not because he's a copy of the MCU. It's ironically because he isn't. Holy sh I didn't expect that! I know I've been complaining about this the whole video, but here's the thing. That version of Killmonger is well done. He argues about how Wakanda should have helped the world more with all of its resources. And he's actually right. Most comic villains have good arguments, but never at a point where the hero agrees with them. He's one of the best parts of the movie and considered one of the best MC villains ever. This version of Killmonger wants to rule Wakanda and destroy everything. That's it. Just the average villain. I know they had no way of knowing what he'd end up like, but if your villain was just gonna be boring and barely show up, then why couldn't you do Man-Ape, Claw, or Atuma from the previous season? You could have him create the war between Atlantis and Wakanda, which also means you can have Namor. You have the rights for him, or how about Doctor Doom? That would have been awesome to see. And you got the rights back at the time, so you could have done it. So thanks to Killmonger, this leads to political conflicts with Atlantis and Wakanda, which worries everyone, including the Avengers. I actually like how this season includes the political effect that Black Panther has. It's something you don't think about, which leads to T'Challa leaving the Avengers, but Cap still wants to help, so he sticks around. I get why the Avengers can't help, but it's weird considering that they all defied the government's orders back in Season 3. The story kind of takes a back seat with the occasional reminder, and we just get fun episodes with interesting characters characters like White Wolf, Man-Ape, Zemo, and Claw. See, that's what I'm talking about. And as you've noticed, yes, the animation style has changed. My complaints are the same as last time. So do I still have to say it? I mean, you can't say it with me, but you want me to say it? Say the line, Bart! There's no shading. I have issues with Black Panther's design. There's no extra layer on him, so his design to me just looks decent when it could've looked better. Don't know what I'm talking about? Alright, here's an example. When you have a character who dresses in all black, and you're animating or drawing them, you want to add an extra layer of color so you can see them when they're meant to be seen. Like Batman in the animated series has blue. Or 
adding the shine like they did with him last season. I mean, they do the same for Tony, so why not him? He's wearing armor too. They do add some lines to him, and I like that he's actually black and not very, very dark gray. But I feel like they could have done more with the designs. Since this is still an Avengers show, let's start with them. Iron Man's and Captain America's designs are just lazy. I mean, come on. Children's coloring books put more effort than this. Hawkeye lost his cool look and just looks like a douche. And what the f*** is this Ant-Man's design? How was this acceptable? We get to see the Inhumans one more time and did they accidentally draw Starfire instead of Medusa? Well, let's see how the bad guys look. Tiger Shark looks alright. I mean, anything is better than these. This looks nothing like Crossbones. Even Marvel's Spider-Man got that right. Taskmaster looks like a wannabe edgelord who stayed up past his bedtime. Boom. Roasted. Why did you design Zemo to be a gothic bane? You had the perfect design before. And why does his helmet have to magically retract when he wants to show his face? Hollywood, stop doing that! All the Atlanteans look silly and don't say it's because they're fish people. Aquaman shows us that you can make stupid stuff look cool. So what's their excuse? And really, this is Madame Mask? The whole point is that her entire face is covered. You couldn't even get that right? But I think the worst design goes to Man-Ape. Simply because you can't even tell he's supposed to look like a white gorilla. The other designs at least stuck to the theme. But there is literally nothing interesting about this. All these redesigns feel lazy compared to the previous seasons. And I don't understand how any of them were approved. Alright, so getting back on track, we've been searching for this key that leads to a lost temple. Along the way, Whitney turns bad and White Wolf supposedly betrays T'Challa. But Zemo actually does. I mean, that's your fault buddy, Cap literally told you. He possesses a crown which ends up being unstable without vibranium. Black Panther and Cap try to contain it, but with no time left, Cap makes the ultimate sacrifice and seemingly dies. Again. Yeah, it kind of takes out the impact, but you get it. Which leads to the Avengers blaming him. I saw what happened. Black Panther killed Captain America. No, T'Challa. What have you done? <sighs> Which pains me to say this, but the Avengers are the worst thing about this season. First off, half of them are missing. I mean, I get that you wanted to focus on a smaller team, but where's Hulk? He was one of the best parts of the show, and you just leave him out? He appears in Marvel's Spider-Man, so why couldn't he be here? And where's Falcon? Throughout the series, Hawkeye has proven more than once that he's just more than a guy with a bow and arrow. They establish how much he cares about his teammates and how he'll always have their backs. You don't have to follow their rules. You can decide for yourself. I can. And I do. Here, he is annoying and whining about everything. Hey, Cap! And the guy who quit the Avengers. Hawkeye, glad to see you're on board with this. I'm not on board. This is S.H.I.E.L.D. business, Cap. Avengers business. Last time I checked, we weren't good enough for King Panther. People can change, Panther. You did. Oh, not anymore. He quit, remember? And if she says it's true, it's true. Tell him that. Captain America isn't here to back you up. Convenient, huh? Hey, your kingship. Why didn't you let us know you were here before the big entrance? Wait, let me guess. It's a secret. There's also a point where his hands are damaged and he becomes useless. from point A to point B quickly, which aren't much use in a box. Okay, have it your way. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Dora gets powered down and starts acting like the MCU Dora. He even changes his look in one episode and it's never explained. Black Panther! That was a mighty fine trick you played against me when last we met. With the box in my arm, 
Oh, look, it's me, Thor, being shot into space. It is good to see you under better circumstances, Thor. All of you. But what has happened to your eye? Oh, this? It's nothing. Just a scratch, really. I totally won the fight. Travis Willingham is a great voice actor, and I love his version of Thor. This version of Thor is badass. Halt, villains. The battle stops here. Ridiculous. You might buy your team a few seconds, but you can't stand up to the Squadron Supreme by yourself. You may have strength in numbers, but I have strength in this. That will not be enough, Asgardian. To wish you stay down. As guardians do not make wishes, we make war! But because everyone liked Thor Ragnarok, now he has to act like that and it totally doesn't work. Here's the thing, Travis Willingham is funny too. Go watch Critical Role and see for yourself. But you can't make him act like Chris Hemsworth and expect it to be the exact same. These are two different versions of the character. But the worst one of all is Iron Man. Boy, talk about a total downgrade. This season destroys everything you liked about him. He's more annoying than Hawkeye, useless with and without the armor, and is dead set on stopping Black Panther, even though he kept clinging on to him in the first episode. In fact, I don't even think he ever apologized after all this. The best of the Avengers are pretty much the same, with Cap and Ms. Marvel being the best, but Kamala disappears even though we had an episode of her. Not only that, but my main problem is that the Avengers constantly butt in with Black Panther and try so hard to fight for the spotlight. I get that they want to help, but they just make things worse. If you were going to do this, then why did you give Black Panther a season in the first place? Look, they're even sneaking in on his own poster. So basically it's Black Panther vs the Avengers and this episode shows how OP he is. Of course, this could all be avoided if you just talk to him. T'Challa gets Claw to show him his ancestors past and we get 3 episodes of previous Black Panthers. We also find out Cap is alive and free him from the crown, as well as Bass, one of Wakanda's founders. Really cool episodes that unfortunately has to end because we need to save the Avengers. I hate so much about the things that you choose to be. So like I said, Hawkeye's hands are damaged and Atuma ends up dying, which finally leads to war with Wakanda. But before we can do that, we need to save Black Widow first. Person. Ah, I'm gonna kill myself! Wow. I'm going to kill myself and it's your fault! Alright, this has gone on long enough, so let's wrap this up. The Shadow Council and Bass take over the mantle, while Tuma's daughter and Tiger Shark tries to destroy Wakanda as well. All this leads to Bass sacrificing herself and White Wolf dying for him. This also ends with Shuri becoming the Queen of Wakanda, giving T'Challa some well-deserved free time. This season was a true love letter to Black Panther, and while I have my problems with how the story is told, I- Wait, it's still not over? You gotta be kidding me! Okay, Pam, that's it. I'm going home. Apparently, that episode wasn't good enough, and we needed to end with the Avengers, because they totally deserve it. Also, House of M, really? Black Panther teams up with the Avengers once again to stop Hydra for the fifth time. And Hawkeye is useless since he can't use his bow and arrow. Why did Tony let him on this mission? Couldn't he have at least given him a gun? Or his gloves at least? Madame Mask tries to control the world, but she's destroyed later so who cares. Now it's over. <sighs> now is the problem with this season. While I love the Black Panther stuff, the Avengers were ruined and became the worst part of their own show. And that's it, because the show quietly got cancelled. Alright, I'm confused. Is this a happy ending or a sad ending? It's an ending, that's enough! Avengers Assemble, for all its intents and purposes, 
was made to cash on the MCU, and it did that to great extent. But it still somehow managed to tell great stories and gave us moments we'll never get on the big screen. It could have gone on much longer, but it is clear that the higher ups started messing with it, and that's why it ended up the way it did. If the writers and animators had more freedom and didn't have to follow what the MCU did, then this could have been better than Earth's Mightiest Heroes. It's clear that Marvel is going to stick with MCU shows, but there are some shows coming out that they get to experiment with, like Marvel Zombies, X-Men coming back, and hey, a Spider-Man show I actually wanted. I knew they listened to me. Now if only. Like I said, this could have ended up like the Avengers game, but we got lucky with the people who worked on this. They clearly love this universe and put a lot of effort into making this. So I congratulate everyone who wrote, animated, and voice acted in this show. I hope everyone is still doing what they love because they truly did the best they could. I actually recommend you watch this show, although you can skip some episodes. Maybe one day the Avengers will come back on our small screens. Granted, it may not be these Avengers since that time's over now, and maybe we'll finally get a good Avengers game. But until that day comes, Excelsior, true believers.